The functions that we've used so far in our code are all ones that are already present on our computer, either because we wrote them and put them into the scripts ourselves, or because they were a part of the either built in to the language or a part of the standard library. But as I said earlier, the huge amount of the uh, code that's available for using in Python and R was written by other people. And we won't necessarily have that code when we download the basic Python itself. So being able to get additional code from somewhere else is a really important thing. And to help us do that, we have a thing called package managers. So package managers basically retrieve packages from well-known repositories. So um, the, the package is just simply a file that gets downloaded from the repository, which is some website somewhere on the internet. And once those file package files are downloaded, then the package manager will extract code libraries out of them and store them somewhere on the computer. Of course, it's important when for your programming language uh, to be able to know where those packages are stored. So in addition to just um, unpacking them and extracting them, they also provide to the language information about what, uh, where on the computer, what, what directories or folders the packages are stored in so that they can be located. The other thing that happens sometimes is that one package will actually depend on another package. And so if you want to run something in the first package, it won't actually work unless you also have the second package. So the package managers uh, automatically can manage these dependencies. So if you say you want the first package, it will automatically go and receive and retrieve the second package as well. So there are several um, package managers that people use. The um, Python command line package managers, uh, which are typically used, are called pip and conda. Both check what's known as the Python package index. This is kind of a standard uh, repository where people put code they want to share with other people. So pip um, stands for preferred installation program, at least some people say that. And then Conda is an alternative package manager that you have available if you install Anaconda, which we will talk about later. In R, there is a, a single central repository where people store packages. It's called the Comprehensive R Archive Network, or CRAN. And the Python language actually has a built-in function called install.packages, and you can use that uh, to install packages in R. But also, integrated development environments may have package managers built right into them. So let's take just a moment and see how this works. I'm going to go ahead and open up the terminal here. So if I want to use the Python, um, the preferred package manager pip, I can just simply say pip and then give a command. So like if I say pip list, it will list all of the different packages that I've uh, that have been installed and are available on my computer. Um, so if I want to install a new package from the command line interface, I just type pip install and then the name of the package. So that's a perfectly good way to do it. But as I said, you can sometimes in IDE will also have a graphical way of installing packages. So for example, in Thani, if I go up to tools, there's an option called manage packages. And here I can just basically uh, say uh, the name of a package and it will um, look for it. So here's a package and it does not have an install option because actually I can see that I already have requests installed on my computer. But if I didn't already have it, there would be a button that would say install, and then it would automatically download and install that. And then once the package has been installed as a library on my computer, then I would be able to simply uh, use the import statement to make use of any functions that were inside of that package.
I'll say one final word about environments before we move on. The uh, environment in which your, uh, your script is running can be very specific and it's possible to actually have several different environments installed on your computer. There's a, a thing called virtual environments that Python has and you might wonder why you would want to run several different environments. Well, if you install one library, sometimes it will have a conflict with another kind of library. And so if you install both of them at once, they won't work. So by having separate environments, you can essentially have one environment where you, wrote, where you run code that requires a certain set of packages and another environment where you only want to have other packages involved. So that's actually a good thing. Um, it helps you to, uh, to separate out potentially conflicting things. One thing that is a bit confusing sometimes is that if sometimes if you install a package in one application, for example, if you install it using Thani, and then you go to a different application like Spider and you say to import a function and it says, I don't know what that function is, it may be because you installed it in one environment and not in another environment. 